All right, for the sake of an anime review, I am wearing an anime shirt. Yes, I've been wearing a comic book shirt on an anime review. Before we start, I want to let you guys know that my reviews are spoiler free with a little bit of sprinkly spoil in it. Uh, not too much, but if you don't really want to get too spoiled with this review, go ahead and skip it. But I promise you it's not too much. You can watch the show and enjoy it. Besides, I am uploading this kind of late, so you guys hopefully have seen the show, so let's get started. Alright, before we start, I want to mention that the show does a great job knowing what it is and showing that the main cast are young teenagers and it treats them like young teenagers it doesn't give them any more power over the show i'll explain more as we go along so from the last episode we saw that mob actually joined the body improvement club you know so he can make himself better likable the one thing though is that i found it funny that the telepathy club is technically still alive within the body improvement club. Also, there's a scene where Mob is jogging and the body improvement club come and pick him up because he fainted and now they're actually helping him out. That's actually kind of cool. Not everybody's a jerk. So this episode focuses more on Mob's inner desires, inner desires by wanting to be popular. And that's the recruiting theme of this episode. And also, that's how he ends up in a cult. And a cult called LOL. I mean, Wow, that is actually pretty damn funny, naming a cult LOL, but hey, it adds more to the wacky world of Mob Psycho 100. And because we end up in the LOL cult, we get introduced to the- Mizato is a photographer, and also she writes for her school's newspaper, so she went in this cult just to check out why it was so popular within a month. Now that's all great and dandy, but you just don't walk into a cult, like, they'll kill you, man. Like, you just don't walk into a random cult and be like, hey, what's up? I'm here to investigate. Can I just leave now? And this is the point that I was making in the beginning of the video. She's just a young girl. And so this is so much for her to handle. You know, she goes in the cold, tries to expose them, but she knows she can't. So she doesn't want to do it anymore. She just wants to back away. And I like how the show does that. It shows that they are not powerful. You know, in most animes, teenagers, especially middle schoolers, have, I don't know, the ability to kill like thousands of people. But no, this show actually does a good job on putting them in a situation that they can't get out of. And we also get exposed to the leader of the club, which is kind of funny. His name is Dimple out of all things. Dimple, and pretty much what Dimple wants is that he wants to make everybody happy. He wants to force his happiness onto other people. And sometimes in reality that sounds like a good thing, but it can go bad. And he forces himself on Mob. Mob isn't the person to be happy. There's a reason why he's not happy. I found, I found that kind of interesting that he can't be happy uh, because he can't hold his emotions. But the way they show it, it's almost like his emotions are the esper powers he has, the esper powers he's holding inside. And I also want to mention that Mob loves milk. I found that very funny. The very opposite of Fullmetal Alchemist Edward Elric where he hates milk, but Mob really likes milk. I, I just love that part where he just looked clueless. The picture of the cow munching on the grass. No, no, no. Yeah, that, that was actually pretty damn funny. But then we see Dimple pushing around Mob so hard up to the point where he feels like he's gonna explode. You know, I kind of felt bad watching this. I was like, damn, you shouldn't push Mob like that. They're like, don't do that, man. That, that's pretty, that's pretty uh, effing bad. He's pushing and pushing oh, to the point of bullying Mob, actually. And then from there, we get more character development for Mob. It shows his past. And it's something I can relate to, actually, which is the same thing as this Hispanic saying called put on your batteries. I know it doesn't make sense in English, but it's literally that. Get a clue and put on your batteries means the same thing. And they used to tell me that because I wouldn't really be paying attention. It's kind of like, get, get a clue, like get a grasp of reality. So pretty much that's what Mob is missing. You know, and Mob kind of hates this. He hates when people say get a clue and Dimple just triggered him. Ah, triggered. You know, this is actually kind of hilarious because so far at episode 3, I don't like the girl he likes. I don't like the girl that Mob likes. She sounds kind of a jerk. Honestly, I like the little camera girl better than her. But to be fair, I haven't read any of the original material. But as of now, Tsunobi, I just annoys me. She, she hurts Mob in such a way that it hurts me, okay? It, it hurts me. 
because I know what it, that feels like. You know, after Dimple bullying Mop so much, he just explodes. He lets his inner demons get out. And we get this beautiful glossy looking fight scene, which is really well animated. Thank you, Bones. Thank you for still being around and thank you for animating such a well show. You know, and it's funny how Mob, after this whole bullying of this like laughing cult, like he still goes up to Arataka and tells him what happened. He still doesn't know if what he did was the right thing or not. You know, and Arataka is almost like a stepbrother to him. And yes, Arataka isn't the best person in the world because he himself is kind of clueless, but he always finds a way to cheer Mob up somehow. The line that caught me off guard and is actually really well executed was the line that Arataka said. He tells Mob that he is his protagonist of his own story, which is actually kind of cool. Meaning that you shouldn't really go on about let other people judge you. You know, just because you like skateboarding, you shouldn't be ashamed of it. Because you like drawing, you shouldn't be ashamed of it. It's actually kind of a cool lesson. You shouldn't be ashamed of showing people what you like and expressing your feelings. Uh, unless into your like tentacle rape and all that, then you should probably lower that down. There's some stuff that you don't want to show anyone. So in conclusion, episode 3 of Mob Cycle 100 just builds up more character development and more depth to Mob. We still haven't gotten any info on his brother Arataka, Tsunobi, that little cute camera girl that I already forgot her name. It does a great job on why Mob suppresses his feelings and that is actually a really good explanation. On a side note, I actually want to say that this is kind of like a cliche of, you know, anime characters just reaching a certain level and then they like go off haywired and crap. Another side note is the animation for Mob when he goes 100 is actually different from his original character design. His character design changes, he, his pupils expand, you know, really big. It's actually really neat to see, I really enjoyed that. All right guys, that was it for episode three of Mob Psycho 100. I can't make 100 with my fingers, but you guys get my drift, right? I'm assuming you guys would. All right guys, that was it for Mob Psycho episode three anime review. Make sure to check up on our channel. We have some cool content by other people. Uh, I've been Adrian and I'll see you guys later.